InsideThunder.com. Powered by Wheeler Whitlock Insurance. Coach uh, Michael Kenny, can you just talk about the, the second half and especially the fourth quarter, just what enabled your Warriors to be able to come back and take the lead and be able to hold on to it? Well, obviously, you know, Clay Thompson was ridiculous. I mean, the shooting was um, some of the most in incredible shooting you'll ever see. I mean, I think he set a record for, for threes. Um, but our defense was fantastic. Um, you know, we, we, we kept getting stops and we couldn't get the board, but we stayed with it. And um, I think we, uh, we just defended really well and came up with key stops. And then, obviously, um, Steph and Clay both uh, were really rolling there in the fourth. Tim Calacami, Mercurinis, what are you telling them? So let's say you start the fourth quarter, down eight. Yeah. Are you just saying just stay in it? What, what are you telling them at this point when it looks like maybe things aren't going your way? Yeah, just, just stay with it. Stay with it. Um, we know how explosive our guards are in particular. And um, we've got other guys who can knock down threes. And the and, um, main thing was getting stops and getting rebounds. And uh, we fought hard on the glass uh, tonight, 49-43. Uh, it wasn't the debacle that games three and four were, obviously. So fought hard, made enough stops, and got enough rebounds to, uh, to just give our offense a chance. And, and um, you know, both, as I said, both Clay and Steph hit, hit huge shots. Harrison hit a big three from the corner. And I thought Andre Migadala was kind of the unsung hero. His defense uh, throughout the fourth was, was huge. And then uh, he made that big tying lay-in, too, um, with a couple minutes to go. Steve, Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Draymond was playing so well in the third quarter. He picked up fourth, and, and then the fifth foul was pretty tight. Uh, did that feel like kind of a gut punch at the time when he had to come out? Not really. We were right in it. Um, I, I wanted to get him a couple of minutes rest anyway, and um, so it didn't, it didn't hurt us uh, too badly. You know, the main thing was to, to if, he, if he could stay in the game, uh, not foul out. And uh, so he got his two and a half minutes rest at the end of the third, and we played him the whole fourth, and he was able to finish the game, and I thought he was uh, terrific. Well, Iguodala was going, you know, one possession after the other, sometimes on Russ and sometimes on KD. What gives him the ability to stop two unique guys like that? Well, Andre is uh, one of the smartest, uh, not only basketball players, but he's an incredibly smart human being. He, he just, he sees everything kind of before it happens. And he's blessed with uh, great speed and, and length and, and uh, strength. So, you know, there's a reason he's been one of the best defenders in, in the league for a long time. And uh, he's a, really a, a key part of, of every game for us because we ask him to do so much. Coach John Herrick, ESPN Radio and Enid. Steph Curry had nine points at the half, but then he scores 14 in the third quarter, and then he gets going in the fourth, and obviously Clay Thompson was going crazy there in the second half. Were you drawing specific things up to kind of get them going, or were you just telling them, hey, if you got it, catch and shoot it, get it out there? No, I mean, we didn't, we didn't draw a whole lot up that, uh, that created shots for them. Um, they were mostly just um, you know, kind of playing the way they play. If we can get a stop, get out and transition, um, the defense isn't set. So once we started making consistent stops, uh, it opened up our offense because we could kind of flow, flow into, the, uh, into the half court rather than you know, having to walk the ball up. Karen Krauss, New York Times. Steve, you played in two game sevens as a player. What, if anything, can you take from those experiences and convey to your players for Monday? I think it was three, but who's counting? Um, Knicks, Bulls, Pacers, Bulls, uh, Cleveland. I was playing for Cleveland. We played Boston in a game seven in 92, I think. Um, not that I remember these things, but uh, uh, game sevens are um, they're fun. You know, they're uh, pressure packed. Um, I don't think there could be any more pressure on us in Game 7 than there was tonight. So um, we feel um, fortunate to get that opportunity. 
Um, you know, we're in this position because we, uh, we struggled in game one, closing that game, and, um, but we, we, uh, we got it back tonight, and now we've got our home crowd, uh, whatever it is, Monday, I guess. <clears throat> um, but we've got to play uh, a great game. It's not gonna, our crowd's not going to be enough. They'll help, but we've got to play a great game. Steve, Michelle Steele, ESPN, you called the last two games in this building debacles. What was the key to this team keeping their composure considering the energy of the crowd tonight? Uh, yeah, I, th I just thought we had so much more grit uh, tonight. Um, the, the toughness was lacking in three and four. Uh, we were out of sorts. Um, you know, we were on our heels, and um, I think it took us um, – Game five to kind of get our footing again. Game five helped us kind of regain our, our confidence and some traction in the series. We saw some things that we did well, and, and uh, we knew we could come in here and play a much better game. Carl Stewart from the Barry News Group. Clay was making a lot of three-pointers, but when he pulled up on that, like, 30-footer above the key, I mean, were you having a good feeling at that point that, you no. know, just... <laughs> That was the only one all night, actually, that I thought, what are you doing, you know? But it's the, the beauty of, of Steph and Clay. Uh, and they kind of walk that fine line between lethal and crazy. And uh, we have to live with uh, some crazy shots, some crazy misses, because they, they make more than their fair share. And um, so Clay hits several uh, tough, tough shots tonight. Uh, but I know the one you're talking about. I, I didn't think that had any chance. Steve, you talked about winning last game over your win last game created some momentum. What does this, the way you did it, create? Do you feel an emotional momentum that's, that's going to take you through game seven? Well, I mean, it, it, obviously we have the momentum now. We've won two in a row, uh, just like they won two in a row, and, and now we go home. So we feel feel a lot better now than we did a few days ago, obviously, but it um, doesn't guarantee anything. Um, you know, momentum can change. We still have to uh, battle like crazy uh, against this team on every possession because they're, uh, they're so athletic, so big. Um, just getting a rebound uh, against these guys seems like a, a tall task. And uh, so we've got to fight. We've got to scrap and, and and come up with uh, loose balls and rebounds and, and see what happens. But it, it's nice to be going home. Steve, Ron Krejcik from the San Francisco Chronicle. I'm sorry if you asked this before, but Iguodala, I know you've talked a lot about his savvy in these situations and his driving layup and then that steal that set up Clay's yeah. three. Uh, how, how significant, obviously, can you sort of speak to the significance of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, Andre is always guarding the, uh, the other team's best offensive uh, wings or even point guards, uh, and Durant's as difficult as there is in the league in terms of trying to trying to slow him down. So Andre was great. Um, Harrison did a good job as well, uh, but Andre made some huge plays down the stretch defensively to give us a chance to win. Well, I thought it was a uh, you know a hard fought game by by both teams. Um, I thought in the first half for us offensively, I, I really thought we, we had really, really good ball movement. We, I thought we generated some very, very good looks. Uh, we had a, a tough time, I thought, in the first half making shots. Um, I think it was fortunate for us. I think they probably had some difficulty, too, making some shots. Um, and then I thought in the fourth quarter, obviously, the, the, the performance by Clay Thompson and how well he shot the ball. And then, you know, I, I felt like we didn't do a great job, you know, coming down the stretch. And I think we've made such great improvements coming down the stretch in terms of just on both offense and defense of doing a better job of executing. And, and, and that really has, wasn't and hasn't been us, you know, the last month and a half. And um, I thought we got a little stagnant coming down the stretch. And then I thought us defensively, we were a little bit late. We made some tough shots. Um, and, and they made some plays, but um, you know, seven-game series. I'm, I'm excited. I think our guys are too about the opportunity to play again. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma and Billy, particularly the last two minutes, where you didn't really get a shot off, much less a good one. What what happened to the offense at, in those last two minutes? Well, I think a couple times, Barry, we got into some some late clock situations. Um, I, I, I think on some of the switching, we needed to have better awareness rolling back. 
you know, um, I think some guys, when they did switch, had some opportunities to kind of go. We, we didn't. Um, that happened twice on the side of the bounds place. Um, and, and, and maybe I need to do a better job of explaining that, um, you know, in, in the timeouts. But I also thought, like, in the half court, we – I just didn't feel like we ran our offense with the pace and the tempo that we needed to run. And I thought we kind of got into it a little bit slowly. Um, you know, when I say slowly in terms of we got the ball where it needed to go, but it never really kind of moved from there. Um, and again, I think we've done a good job. And I thought we made some really positive strides. But, you know, over the last month and a half or since the playoffs started. But I thought we got a little stagnant offensively, no question. Myron Patton, KO Cage, Fox 25. Tough game. It's not a game seven, but certainly you didn't want to go back out west. What was your message to the team when you got in the locker room? Because you know why you lost. Uh, so what was your message to them about game seven? Well, you know, again, I, I think a couple of things, you know, looking at the game. We, we defended, I thought, really, really well in the half court. Um, but, but we really got hurt at the three-point line, and we got hurt on some long rebounds. Um, and obviously, it's really, really hard to overcome 21 three-point shots that they made and and but I also thought our guys gave great effort you know on both ends of the floor um, but I think the opportunity to go back and play again you know is is what I'm excited about I think this group just being around them has been a pretty resilient tough-minded group in terms of being able to bounce back quickly and go out and play uh, Michael Kenning uh, coach uh, Kevin 10 of 31 from the field Obviously, second straight game where he's not shooting particularly well. What did you think of his shot tonight, especially some of the ones he took there in the fourth quarter? Well, I really thought early in the game he got really good looks. You know, he had a couple drives to the basket, didn't quite finish. Um, I thought he had a couple good looks from three. Um, he got the ball, I thought, in some really good areas of the floor. Um, you know, again, you know, where he caught the basketball, um, you know, sometimes I think for Kevin, you know, with – with as, as, as much as he gets, you know, and I'm not using this in the scoop, but grabbed and held and, and he kind of breaks, sometimes putting your head down and driving it and creating, you know, is, 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 is almost like the next best thing there. But I just didn't feel like at times collectively as a group, you know, just with the execution part of it, that we helped him from screening angles and things like that and things we were trying to run. Um, I, I, I thought... Uh, Golden State was able to blow up some of those plays, which made it difficult. And now he got caught with the ball, where we just didn't, we just didn't help each other enough in those situations, in my opinion. Just sitting from the bench, you know, I'll, I'll maybe have a different pulse tomorrow watching the film, but that's what I felt like. Dean Blevins, CBS Oklahoma City. Billy, how much of this was simply a matter of these guys are the defending champs, been there, done that, and even though your guys have won some big games. This was uh, Golden State seemed more prepared or came through in the clutch more than your guys. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I said this before. I was getting asked questions about, like, what are we doing against Steph Curry and Clay Thompson? Like we had, and I said from the beginning that, like, you know, they make shots, and that's what happened. You know, they, you know, Clay Thompson made a lot of shots tonight. You know, give him credit. And some of those shots were closely defended. Some of those shots were from deep. And you, know, you can do that. Now, we did have some breakdowns. I actually thought Steph got a lot of really good looks in the first half that he did not make. And I thought we got bailed out on some, on some of those. And I also thought that, you know, Kevin probably bailed them out because I thought he had some looks too as well. And I thought Serge had a few looks. But the ball didn't go in the basket really in a consistent level for both teams in that first half. Um, and then to your point, like, listen, they just hopped up and knocked down shots. It wasn't like there was like, I mean, Steph was just going one-on-one, -on -one, Thompson was going. So those guys were creating and, and making plays, um, you know, coming down the stretch, and they made big plays. And, and I think for us, coming down the stretch there, I thought we just got a little stagnant, you know, and that we kind of, I felt like we were moving away from that, but we got a little stagnant there. Brian Brinkley, KFOR TV, a little bit uh, on that point as well. You have to make just three three-pointers the whole game. Katie and Russ didn't shoot that well, missed 10 free throws as a team. How frustrating is it to do a lot of the other things well, but you just don't make enough shots to win? You know, you can take a, you know, three or four plays coming down the stretch that maybe we wish we would have had back. But at the reality, I think the stat sheet is a really, really good indicator of how hard our guys played. And what I mean by that is that, you know, you're, you're, you give up 21 three-point shots to three. You miss 10, like there's some things that happen on that stat sheet there that are really difficult to overcome. 
and we kind of were hanging around there and giving ourselves a chance. But, you know, those three or four plays coming down the stretch, yes, probably we'd like to have had them back and maybe wish we could have done something different with them. But at the same point, we were kind of in an uphill battle on some of the stuff that was going on for them. And to me, that's just an indication of who they've been as a team winning 73 games. I give our guys a lot of credit that, you know, we've been able to, you know, play toe to toe with them. And I think that's why there's some level of excitement from our guys about playing again. But to your point, you know, if we go 13% from the three point line and they go 47, that's a huge discrepancy. Forty-four plus minutes for Kevin and, and Russell. Did you feel like fatigue was at all a factor down the stretch? They played a lot in this series. Yeah, you know, it, it, it may or may not have. I mean, look at the stat sheet. I mean, Curry played forty-one, and Thompson was right around forty. Russ was, you know, uh, forty-four. Uh, Kevin, you know, it, it could have been. Probably asked those guys. I took Kevin out in the first in the first half. Took him out in the second half a little bit. I definitely wanted to get him a rest because I played him the whole first quarter. I wanted to get him a, a break there, um, but. I, I, I didn't think so. Um, you know, those guys have, have seemed pretty good. Um, I, 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 thought, I thought when I got Kevin that, I thought Kevin was looking a little bit tired there to start the fourth, and that's why I wanted to get him out and get him, I think it was right, right around the, that 8.59 timeout, we got him out. Um, but I, I felt like they were okay.